Lesson 35. New words. Please listen and repeat. Temple. Temple. Kumbum. Kumbum. Tsongkhapa. Tsongkhapa. Reform movement. Reform movement. Burning conifer needles. Burning conifer needles. Impression. Impression. Pilgrim. Pilgrim. Eager. Eager. Buddha image. Buddha image. Butter sculpture. Butter sculpture. Remain. Remain. Scripture. Scripture. Coated. Coated. Over the New Year holiday. Over the New Year holiday. Explain. Explain. Especially. Especially. Coated with ink. Coated with ink. Decide. Decide. National Day Holiday. National Day Holiday. Not soon forget. Not soon forget. Love to. Love to. New Year's Holiday New Year's Holiday Yellow Sect of Tibetan Buddhism Yellow Sect of Tibetan Buddhism Founder Founder Spinning Prayer Wheel Spinning prayer wheel. Chanting. Chanting. Lama. Lama. Do prostrations. Do prostrations. Significance. Significance. Deity. Deity. Atmosphere. Atmosphere. Publishing room. Publishing room. Wood block. Wood block. Religion. Religion. Famous. Famous. Various. Various. Carved by hand. Carved by hand. 
valuable collection. Valuable collection. Invitation. Invitation. Labor Day holiday. Labor Day holiday. If you like. If you like. Text. Form 10. Lamo, an English student at a college in Qinghai, took Liz, her English friend, to her home over the New Year holiday. Lamo lives near Kumbu, a famous temple of the yellow sect of Tibetan Buddhism. Tsongkhapa, the founder of the yellow sect, was born there in 1357 and began a reform movement in Buddhism. Liz was eager to see the temple which they visited together. Lamo explained the significance of the various Buddha images and other deity images. Liz was impressed with the beauty of the images and found the butter sculptures especially interesting. She also found the atmosphere of the temple very special. The spinning prayer wheels, smell of burning conifer needles, sound of chanting and ringing bells made an impression she will not soon forget. They also saw many lamas and pilgrims at the temple. Pilgrims had come from Tibetan areas in Gansu, Sichuan, Yunnan, Qinghai, and from Tibet. Many pilgrims were doing prostrations before the temple building, where some remains of Tsongkhapa are kept. Liz and Lamo also visited the publishing room of the temple. Here, scriptures are printed by hand from wood blocks. Blocks of wood are carved by hand, coated with ink, and then the scriptures are printed. The temple has a very valuable collection of many scriptures. Liz left the temple feeling that she had seen a very interesting example of Tibetan culture. She decided to learn more about Tibetan history and religion so that the next time she visited the temple, she would understand more. Conversation. Getcha. Liz, would you like to visit my home this New Year holiday? I live near Kumbum. We could visit it together, if you like. Have you ever visited a Tibetan temple before? Oh, Lamo, I would love to visit your home. I've always wanted to visit a Tibetan temple, but I've never had the chance. Do you know why Kumbum is important? I really don't know much about Tibetan religion and culture, Lamu. Why is Kumbum important? Tsongkhapa, the founder of the Yellow Sect of Tibetan Buddhism, was born in 1357 at the present temple site. Kumbum is one of the largest Tibetan temples in China. Pilgrims from many Tibetan areas come there to worship. It sounds very interesting. Thank you so much for the invitation. Drills. Jungwa. Who did Hlamo take home 
over the New Year holiday. She took Liz, her English friend, to her home. Who did Plomo take home over the National Day holiday? She took Beth, her American friend, to her home. Who did Plomo take home over the Labor Day holiday? She took Louise, her French friend, to her home. What about the temple did she find interesting? She found the spinning prayer wheels and smell of burning conifer needles interesting. What about the temple did she find interesting? She found the sound of the chanting and ringing bells interesting. What about the temple did she find interesting? She found the butter sculptures and many pilgrims interesting. What did Liz decide to learn more about? She decided to learn more about Tibetan history. What did Liz decide to learn more about? She decided to learn more about Tibetan religion and culture. What did Liz decide to learn more about? She decided to learn more about Tibetan life. Exercises Part 3 Samba. One. Where does Lamo live? In Qinghai, near Kumbun. Two. Who did Lamo take to her home? Lamo took Liz, her English friend, to her home. Three. What is Kumbum? It is a famous temple of the yellow sect of Tibetan Buddhism. 4. What was Liz eager to see? She was eager to see Kumbum. 5. What did Liz and Lamo visit together? They visited Kumbum together. 6. What impressed Liz? The beauty of the temple images. 7. What did she find particularly interesting? She found the butter sculptures particularly interesting. 8. What made an impression she will not soon forget? The spinning prayer wheels, smell of burning conifer needles, sound of chanting and ringing bells. 9. Where had pilgrims come from? Pilgrims had come from Tibetan areas in Gansu, Sichuan, Yunnan, Qinghai, and from Tibet. 10. 
What were many pilgrims doing? They were prostrating. Eleven. Where were the pilgrims doing prostrations? They were prostrating before the temple building where some remains of Tsongkhapa are kept. Twelve. What are printed by hand from woodblocks? Scriptures. Thirteen. How are the scriptures printed? Blocks of wood are carved by hand, coated with ink, and then the scriptures are printed. Fourteen. What did Liz decide to do? Why? She decided to learn more about Tibetan history and religion so that next time she visits Kumbum, she will understand more. Fifteen. Where does Lamo study? She studies in Qinghai. Sixteen. What does Lamo study? She studies English. Seventeen. Who is Lamo? She is an English student. Eighteen. Who is Liz? She is Lamo's friend. Nineteen. Where is Liz from? She is from England. Twenty. Who went to Lamo's home? Liz went to Lamo's home. Twenty-one. When did Liz go to Lamo's home? She went to her home over the New Year holiday. Twenty-two. Where does Lamo live? She lives near Kumbum. Twenty-three. What is near Lamo's home? Kumbum is near Lamo's home. Twenty-four. What is a famous temple of the yellow sect of Tibetan Buddhism? Kumbum is a famous temple of the yellow sect of Tibetan Buddhism. Twenty-five. Who is the founder of the yellow sect of Tibetan Buddhism? Tsongkhapa is the founder of the yellow sect of Tibetan Buddhism. Twenty-six. Who was born in 1357? Tsongkhapa was born in 1357. Twenty-seven. Why is Tsongkhapa important? Because he founded the yellow sect of Tibetan Buddhism. Twenty-eight. What did Tsongkhapa begin? He began a reform movement. 
29. Who began a reform movement in Buddhism? Tsongkhapa began a reform movement in Buddhism. Thirty. What was Liz eager to see? Liz was eager to see a Tibetan temple. Thirty-one. Who visited the temple together? Liz and Hlamo visited the temple together. Thirty-two. What did Liz explain? Liz explained the significance of the Buddha images and other deities to Liz. 33. What was Liz impressed with? She was impressed with the beauty of the images. 34. What did Liz find especially interesting? She found the butter sculptures especially interesting. 35. What did Liz find very special? She found the atmosphere of the temple very special. 36. What made an impression Liz will not soon forget? The spinning prayer wheels, smell of burning conifer needles, sound of chanting and ringing bells made an impression Liz will not soon forget. 37. What are pilgrims? Pilgrims are people who travel to worship at different places. 38. Who did they see at the temple? They saw pilgrims. 39. Where had the pilgrims come from? They had come from Yunnan, Sichuan, Gansu, Qinghai, and Tibet. 40. What were many pilgrims doing before one temple building? They were prostrating. 41. What is done in the temple publishing room? Scriptures are printed in the temple publishing room. 42. How are woodblocks used? They are used to print scriptures. 43. How are scriptures printed? Woodblocks are carved by hand. The blocks are coated with ink and the scriptures are printed. 44. What are carved by hand? Woodblocks are carved by hand. 45. 
What are coated with ink? Wood blocks are coated with ink. 46. The temple has a very valuable collection of what? The temple has a very valuable collection of scriptures. 47. How did Liz feel when she left the temple? She felt that she had seen a very interesting example of Tibetan culture. 48. What did Liz decide to do? She decided to learn more about Tibetan history and culture. 49. Why did Liz want to learn more about Tibetan history and culture? Because she wanted to understand more the next time she visits a Tibetan temple. Lesson 36 New words Please listen and repeat. King King Songsen Gampo Songsen Gampo Palace of Unchanging Compassion Palace of Unchanging Compassion A.D. A.D. Rain Rain Accomplished Accomplished Alphabet Alphabet Seclusion Seclusion Religious and political commentaries Religious and political commentaries Cause of peace Cause of peace Administrative districts. Administrative districts. Translation. Translation. Buddhistic works. Buddhistic works. Tony Sambota. Tony Sambota. Ministers Ministers India India Tang Dynasty Tang Dynasty Nepal Nepal Great accomplishment. Great accomplishment. Choose. Choose. Magnificent. Magnificent. Architecture. Architecture. Encourage. Encourage. Throughout. 
throughout. Official. Official. Historical material. Historical material. Folk tale. Folk tale. Text. Poem 10. King Songsun Gambu. Tibetan King. Wojil Songsun Gambu. Songsun Gambu was born in the palace of unchanging compassion in 1617 AD. His father was Anandra Song Sen, and his mother was Tibong Zadama Tukur. When he was 13, he became king. During his reign, he accomplished several important things. At the time, Tibetans did not have a written language. King Zongzen Gambu sent Tonma Zambudra, one of his ministers, to India. There he studied different languages. He chose a very good alphabet for the Tibetan language and returned to Tibet. The king also went into seclusion, lasting more than three years. He wrote many religious and political commentaries during this time. Later, in the cause of peace, King Zongzen Gambu divided Tibet into administrative districts and made many laws. King Zongzen Gambu also built the Budala Palace, a magnificent example of Tibetan architecture, and encouraged the translation of many Buddhist works into Tibetan. He had two wives. One was the daughter of the Tang Dynasty Emperor, Tang Tai Zong. The other was the daughter of the King of Nepal. For his great accomplishments, King Zongzen Gambu is still remembered throughout Tibetan areas today. Conversation. Gacha. Joshi, I've heard a lot about Songsen Gampo. Can you please tell me why he is so important to Tibetans? He is one of the most famous Tibetan kings. He lived a long time ago. When and where was he born? He was born in today's Tibet, in the Palace of Unchanging Compassion, in 617 AD. He became king when he was 13 years old. What is he especially remembered for? When he became king, Tibetans did not have a written language. He sent one of his officials to India. After some years of study, he returned to Tibet and made an alphabet that was later used to write Tibetan. He also passed many laws and divided Tibet into administrative districts. He also built the Potala Palace in today's Lhasa. Did he marry? Yes, he had two wives. One was the daughter of a Tang emperor and the other was the daughter of the king of Nepal. Tsongsen Gampu is still remembered by Tibetans today. There are many folk tales and songs about him in Tibetan areas, as well as much historical material. Drills. Jungwa. What did Songtsen Gampo 
accomplished during his reign? King Zongsen Gampu introduced a written language into Tibet. What did Songsen Gampo accomplish during his reign? King Songsen Gampu wrote many religious and political commentaries. What did King Songsen Gampo accomplish during his reign? King Songsen Gampu divided Tibet into administrative districts. What did Songtsen Gampo accomplish during his reign? King Songtsen Gampo made many laws. What did Songtsen Gampo accomplish during his reign? King Songtsen Gampo encouraged the translation of many Buddhist works into Tibetan. Exercises. Xiaojiang. Part three. Samba. One. Who was Songsen Gampu? He was a very famous Tibetan king. Two. Was he born in six seventeen A.D.? Yes, he was. Three. Who were his parents? His parents were Anara Songtsen and Sebang Sanjama Tokar. Four. How old was he when he became king? He was thirteen. Five. Why did King Songtsen Gampu send Tomna Sambuta to India because he wanted to have a written Tibetan. Six. How long was King Songsen Kampu in seclusion? He was in seclusion for more than three years. Seven. What did he do while he was in seclusion? He wrote many religious and political commentaries. 8. What did King Zongsen Gampu do in the cause of peace? He divided Tibet into administrative districts and made many laws. 9. What did he build? He built Botala Palace. 10. What translations did King Songsen Gampu encourage? He encouraged the translation of many Buddhist works into Tibetan. 11. Is King Songsen Gampu still remembered today? Yes, he is. Lesson 37 Ponsin Sobdenba New Words Tahnir Please listen and repeat Dalanyani Jadishi Altitudes Altitudes Tibetan Plateau Tibetan Plateau Ladakh Ladakh Extinct Extinct Harsh Highlands Harsh Highlands Blood Cells Blood cells. Cope with. Cope with. Violent. Violent. 
Celsius. Celsius. Minus forty degrees Celsius. Minus forty degrees Celsius. Sweat glands. Sweat glands. Efficient adaptations. Efficient adaptations. Conserving heat. Conserving heat. Bathe. Bathe. Lead yak. Lead yak. Makes the trail. Makes the trail. Single file. Single file. Poor diet. Poor diet. Coarse grass. Coarse grass. Withered leaves and twigs. Withered leaves and twigs. Sure footed. Sure footed. Herds. Herds. In search of. In search of. Herbs. Herbs. Lichens. Lichens. Gregarious animals. Gregarious animals. Shun contact. Shun contact. Gestation period. Gestation period. Probable. Probable. Calving pattern. Calving pattern. Domesticated yaks. Domesticated yaks. Alternate years. Alternate years. Life span. Life span. Rapid decline. Rapid decline. Uncontrolled. Uncontrolled. Poaching. Poaching. Text. Form 10. Wild yaks. Ndung. The wild yak is a very large animal. It was probably domesticated in Tibet over 2,000 years ago. It is estimated that there are now around 10,000 wild yaks. There are more than 12 million domestic yaks grazing on the Tibetan plateau. The domestic yak is smaller than the wild yak. The largest wild yak may weigh 1,000 kilograms. They live at high altitudes 
of between 3,200 and 5,400 meters on the Tibetan Plateau. Some have been seen as far east as Gansu province and to the south in Ladakh. They are thought to be extinct in Nepal. These large animals are well suited to the harsh highlands. They have more blood cells than lowland cattle. This means they obtain more oxygen and this allows them to live comfortably at high altitudes. They are able to cope with the long, cold winter months of violent winds and snowstorms. The temperature can be as low as negative 40 degrees Celsius. The wild yaks have thick, long coats and few sweat glands. These are efficient adaptations for conserving heat. They can bathe in lakes and streams in extreme cold. They can travel in deep snow. A lead yak makes the trail and the others follow in single file, carefully stepping in the leader's footsteps. In the winter, they survive on a poor diet of dry, coarse grass and withered leaves and twigs. In the spring, these sure-footed animals often travel in large herds of 100 to 200. They go up to the higher grasslands of the Tibetan Plateau in search of new grass, herbs, and lichens. They are gregarious animals, but shun contact with humans. The young are born in the spring months of April, May, and June after a gestation period of nine months. It is probable that the wild yak follow the calving pattern of domesticated yaks, of giving birth to a single calf in alternate years. A calf is fully grown in six to eight years. The lifespan of a yak is about 25 years. Over the last 50 to 60 years, there has been a rapid decline in the number of wild yaks. Uncontrolled hunting during the second half of the 20th century and now poaching are important reasons why there are fewer and fewer wild yaks. Other reasons are bigger herds of domestic yaks that have moved into the places where wild yaks live and diseases that wild yaks have caught from domestic yaks. Exercises Xiarjiang Part 4 Zhua 1. How much does a fully grown yak weigh? It may weigh 1,000 kilograms. Two, at what age is a wild yak fully grown? A wild yak is fully grown when it is six to eight years old. Three, give two reasons for the decline in the numbers of wild yak. Uncontrolled hunting and poaching. 4. What do wild yaks eat? They eat grass, leaves, and twigs. 5. When was the wild yak first domesticated in Tibet? It was first domesticated more than 2,000 years ago. 6. Give two examples of how the wild yak is adapted to the harsh conditions of life 
on the Tibetan Plateau. It has thick, long coats. It has many blood cells. 7. What does natural habitat mean? It means the place where wild yaks live. 8. What is a gregarious animal? It is an animal that doesn't like to be alone. 10. Are there more wild yaks than domesticated yaks on the Tibetan Plateau? There are more domestic yaks than wild yaks. 10. What is meant by in single file? In single file means one after the other. Lesson 38 New words Please listen and repeat. Hidded. Hidded. Nasty. Nasty. Immature. Immature. Egg. Egg. Larva. Larva. Tapeworm. Tapeworm. Parasite. Parasite. Infection. Infection. Intestines. Intestines. Liver. Liver. Cyst. Cyst. Allergy. Allergy. Allergic. Allergic. Symptom. Symptom. Slaughterhouse or abattoir. Slaughterhouse or abattoir. Precaution. Precaution. Motto. Motto. Liver worm. Liver worm. Text. Form 10. Hittited disease. Sinten. Hittited is a nasty disease. People become ill when they are infected with the immature form of the tapeworm called Echinococcus granulosus, or liverworm. The worm lives in dogs and foxes. From these carriers, the tapeworms are passed to yaks, lowland cattle, sheep, goats, and humans. These tapeworms are found in many parts of the world. They are a serious health risk to people who come into contact with infected animals. You can be infected after touching an infected animal. After that, you touch your face and mouth with dirty hands. The eggs enter your body. The eggs develop into larvae that move into the intestines. From the intestines, the larvae travel to the liver through the blood vessels. 
cysts form around the larvae within the liver. The cysts grow and grow over a long period. This may be from 5 to 20 years. The cysts contain infected fluid. When they have grown big, they can block blood vessels and the infected fluid can leak into the lungs, heart, brain, and bones. Conversation. Getcha. Do you know anyone who has had Hittitid disease? One of my classmates died of that disease two years ago. That's terrible. Yes, we were all really sad. He was sick for a long time, and then he died. What should someone do if they think they might have Hittitid disease? They should go to a good doctor at once. He should send them to a hospital for x-rays and scans. What is the treatment? Surgery to cut away the cysts is one treatment. Another is to take the medicine called albenzidol. This medicine is not always effective. What can we do to prevent getting Hittitid disease? We must always be very careful when touching dogs, which may have the disease. We must wash our hands after touching these dogs. That way, we can avoid getting the eggs of the liverworm in our mouths.